Hello, I'm Robin Worley and welcome to Lenscraft. Today I want to discuss vignettes. This is a creative technique that became popular in the early days of photography and it still works well today. If you're not familiar with vignettes, it's typically this darkening effect around the edge of an image frame. This helps to draw the viewer's attention into the lighter central part of the image and hold the attention in the frame. If you're a Lightroom user, you already have a great vignette tool in the effects panel. But if you're working with images in Photoshop, there are more creative alternatives that you can use. In this video, I'm just going to show you a couple of the effects I use. Let's start with a simple example, and I'm going to add an oval vignette to this image. The first thing I do is add a new empty layer onto which I'm actually going to paint my vignette. To do this, select Layer, New Layer, when the dialog appears, enter the name of the new layer, and I'm going to call mine Vignette. Having created my layer, I can now draw on this with the elliptical marquee tool. And this is the tool over here on the left. Now at the moment, the centre of the ellipse that I've drawn is actually the selection but I need to switch this. You can easily do this using select an inverse in the Photoshop menu. Next, I'm going to set my foreground color so it's black. Another tip to do this quite easily is if you press D on your keyboard, you'll cause the foreground and background colors to be reset to black and white. You can then press X to switch between black and white. Next, I'm going to select the Paint Can tool. And where I click on the area that I've uh, selected in the image, it will fill it with black. The next thing to do is blend our vignette into the image by blurring it. But before we can apply a blur, we need to remove the selection. If we don't, the blur is only going to be applied inside the selected area. Easy way to remove this is using select and deselect in the menu. So select, deselect. I can now go ahead and blur this uh, painted area. The easy way to do this is to use the filters and I'm going to select filters and blur. And within this, Gaussian blur. How much you blur or how much blur you need to apply will depend on the resolution and size of your image. This is quite a large image, so I'm going to have to apply quite a lot of blurring. Once you've created your blur, you can now click OK. And that's a simple vignette, but at the moment it's not very convincing. It's a bit too strong. You can reduce the strength of the blurring by reducing the opacity over here on the layers. And that now blends the vignette effect into the image. Something else you can do is change the blending mode of the layer. Watch what happens when I change this to soft light. It looks like the vignette's actually been removed, but it hasn't. If I turn off the vignette layer, you can see that the effect was still present, but it's quite subtle. Let's now repeat the effect, but this time I'm going to use a rectangular vignette. Again, I'm going to add a new layer. So layer, new layer. I'll call this vignette 2. And I'm going to select the rectangular marquee tool. And now I'm dragging out the area of the vignette. Again, I can invert this, and now I can fill the area with black using the Paint Can tool. Remove the selection, and now I can apply a blur using the Gaussian Blur filter. Again, if the image is too strong, or the, sorry, the vignette is too strong, just reduce down 
the opacity and you can also try some blending modes. You can also enable multiple vignettes to create different effects. Next, I want to show you a similar technique called edge burning. Start by adding a new layer And this time I'm going to select the entire layer by selecting all in the menu. The other alternative is I could press Ctrl A on my keyboard. Now I can select the edit stroke option from the menu. So if we're looking to edit, I can use stroke and I can select the stroke width. If you're not familiar with this, a stroke line is a very thin line applied around the edge of an image frame. You can set the colour here. I'm using black. You can apply the width of the stroke here. I'm going to apply 10. And I can set the location to the inside. And that means the inside of the selection will have the 10 pixel width stroke line applied around it. Typically, you would use around 10 to 15 for an image like this. The next thing I want to do is duplicate this layer. I'm going to use do that by pressing Ctrl J on the keyboard. Now I can apply a Gaussian blur to my layer. How much blur you apply really depends on the look you're trying to create. And also, the resolution of your image. I'm going to start with around 100. And now I'm going to duplicate that layer again by pressing Ctrl J. As you can see, that's created a bit of an edge burn effect. I can apply or reapply the Gaussian blur to that layer again. I can turn off, if I want to, the hard edge stroke line, or I could leave it in or even blur it a little bit further. And don't forget that you can also adjust the opacity and the blending modes. So you could use something like overlay. Another good option is multiply, which will darken the image, but it won't darken it evenly all over. And again, you can use your edge burn and your vignettes, draw the viewer's attention into the center of the frame. I hope you found this useful and keep watching for more tips and techniques. Thank you.